Hi folks. One of the things about having having done loads and loads of, of paintings and keeping records of them, photographic records, is that you can you can use them for the, for basing another painting on in a different way, different colours. We've been painting winter lately, but sometimes we paint winter in the summer and uh, I'm now going to have a go at uh, a, a summery, meadowy type of painting. Uh, plenty of shadow uh, in the distant trees and a sort of meadow here, quite a high horizon. This is quite a small piece, this is about seven and a half inches, or well, seven by ten, let's say, <clears throat> the actual frame size. Uh, quite small, but, but uh, doesn't really matter what size you paint. The larger it, the larger they are, the harder they are, of course. So I'll start by just laying in, using a bit of black, a bit of yellow, and a bit of red. Plenty of yellow. And we'll just put in some, some trees up here. That'll be the sort of level. Above, we can make a slight undulation of the hill we want. So just above, above halfway, we don't want to, to divide the picture into two equal halves. That's the last thing we want to do. Have a bit of blue in there as well. I, I, these days with the sort of opaque mediums, I, I prepare, propose, prefer to, I'll do straight, prefer to paint the sky down to the landscape rather than paint the sky first and then superimpose all the detail on top. But of course you uh, have to keep going over and over and coming back to what you'd already painted underneath. Now that's that's a fairly good shape for for that. Now let's go in with some uh, meadowy stuff now. Uh, so yellow and yellow ochre. Now I've had these paints out since yesterday so that some of them are just to have to be replaced. So let's just get in some, some nice light similar to what I did yesterday really. But they all end up different but I, I, yesterday was a uh, a cold grey day so I painted it as such from a photograph I took on a bike ride was it yesterday come time goes so fast when you're enjoying yourself so this gives us scope for some poppies and that sort of stuff keep everything soft Bring your lights and your to your darks, your darks into your lights. This is a how-to picture, really. Oh, let's just get that in there, and we can put some shadowy colours in there. So a bit of bit of purpley, blue, red, bit of white. It's a good idea to uh, not to throw your paint away. You can cover it up. You can put some shrink wrap over it. Oh, let's have some shadow up here. Just using old Chinese brush. But over the years, the quality's gone out of them, they, or seem to be. They used to have lots of bristles in, now they, they don't. But uh, I'm waiting for that to dry. It really won't take long, because being acrylic, it's quite quick. But a nice light bluey sky with some light clouds coming up over this. There's going to be a lot of light in this. 
in the background. Uh, right, let's uh, carry on with that yellow. I'm mixing the yellow ochre with the white and the cad yellow. I'm not using any uh, burnt sienna. I'm using uh, some some burnt umber, but I'm not. I haven't used that yet. Here, there, from the brush. Let's get it off, get it off. My medium is mainly, uh, oh, that's just where it was. The PVA glue diluted about two to one. That's sort of 30% solution. I use it for priming, for glazing for lubricating. Don't use it for drinking, eh? Okay, let's get some nice lighter stuff in there now. But just, I'm just trying to make everything different. In late summer, the grasses are turning Sort of ochre oh. Let's put in some uh, burnt umber now with the yellows and but I've used quite a bit of white in it. Don't want any real real darks yet. I know some of you might sort of bristle the, the fact that I use quite a bit of uh, black in my greens. But it's a wonderful colour, but, but if you overuse it, of course, you, you will literally punch holes in your paper, but, but it's a great mixer. It's a great mixer with ultramarine and with um, With the yellows, All right, let's get a bit of dark in here. Ooh, just you need you need darks to make your lights lighter. No, I'll go back to the sky in a minute. <coughs> Change the brushes. I'm going to start laying in the sky on that. Let's get all to my camera. Sorry if I'm moving. I'm looking at the camera, the screen, and the little camcorder. Okay, right now then, you can, as you can see, this was painted on a on a, a, a previous demonstration, which uh, was okay at the time. But when I look at it, it doesn't do much for me. So I'll get some nice good. They bring the, the lights down, or the paint down over. Right. I paint this quite. Uh, Stiff from where it's been out overnight since yesterday. You don't know that we're going over. We, this is it, lost and found all the time. Well, put the light back in the, there. We can restate those. Just keep working at it. It dries very quick. This is the great joy of, of acrylic. Is its speed of drying. I want a, quite a light cloud here and there. I'm put a bit of red in there, a bit of pink. Ah, nice. A bit of warm in the sky. Now let's put a bit of bit of ultramarine and a lump of white. We don't want a 
we're looking low down so we're not looking at deep blue sky here we're looking at atmosphere more than anything uh, plenty of white just a little bit darker otherwise it won't show up as blue okay now we can go back to the light colours clean the brush more white in, in that mix now for the clouds nice warm but not white we, we don't want pure white this is titanium white we, we want just slightly off white bit of merging here I'm working from a bit of a distance here because my camera is quite close. This uh, paper has been primed with the PVA glue. Also, I've added some plaster dust, it's like polyfiller, if I want to. The trade name, that sort of stuff, uh, household filler. Right, well, we will. Uh, Go back to that in a minute. We'll let's put in some more trees now. Let's get the yellow. I'm going to change that black to sort of violet in a moment. shadow, mixing the cadmium red with the ultramarine. So you can see the rough surface, it's, it's just a bit of Fabriano, 130 pound. Now I'm going to say the sun is coming from, from here, so we can have the, the shadow on one side. I'll make one big one there. and the rest will be subordinate to that. If you want to do real, uh, photo realism, David Dipnall is a great painter of trees. All right, okay, um, we, we'll go over that with light colours. And it's dry. Let's go back to the foreground now. <coughs> we want plenty of light in the foreground. Mostly yellow ochre and light and with some white. Let's just merge all this here. We don't want any anything hard. Got to bring that tree down a bit there. Just 
just the grasses, look, just the tips. It's catching a bit of light. This is just my way of painting. Tomorrow I might do it entirely different. I don't really have a method. Let's just drag those. I use all the brush. I will be going back to watercolour shortly, but for the moment, I'm painting these for myself and for those that like a bit of acrylic. Right, let's get back to the uh, foreground. Just lose some of that there. Nothing definite. We can put, I'll put in little light blue flowers and stuff. Just building up a web of, of, of colour really. And we can put in some more darks. Well not dark, it's just relative so darker than the lights. As I said earlier, we don't want any real, real heavy darks. Since this is just this sort of shadow colours. So you need you need the dark bits to counter change the light bits like there. <coughs> okay, go back to light. Putting a bit of yellow in with the yellow ochre, plenty of white. They're just catching a little bit of light on the grass, grasses. Trying to get that heat haze. These are, I post these on the British Impressionists on Facebook. Now, coming in for a bit of a hammer in the social media, but we don't use it as social media, we use it to share our painting. What do I do? All sorts of wildflowers, white flowers. Bit of bluey. Uh, light in some of this. Right, I'm going to go back to the uh, to the trees now, and I'm going to use another. I'm going to use <coughs> a. Uh, This one I bought a couple of weeks ago. Loads of hairs coming out of it, being Chinese. Uh, just a num number 12. Hmm. Right, so. I 
put a bit of red with my queen in here. I don't like it, you can just paint over it. So I'll put the shadows back on it. I'm quite my head's quite close to the camera, so you can probably hear me breathing. Now a complementary of yellow is mauve. So I'll just go, I'll just straighten that bit up there. So red and blue and a bit of white. Put some of that back, some of the shadow back. So we don't want to dark. We started with the dark originally. I'm adding a little bit of red to that mix. Or more red with the blue. So we just get this web of colour. I talk about webs of colour. My one of my favourite artists is Arthur Madison. <laughs> I've mentioned it many times. There's a lot of stuff on Google, the gallery. <coughs> he was a master of the fine web of colour. You can just use a little bit of thistly stuff. It's no way to stop with these things. We can keep working at it. We're well on the well on the way to finishing. We're just sorting out these lights and darks in the trees at the moment. I'll just come up there a little bit, change the shape of that tree, that canopy. Now I'll get the dark back in there. Just gently dragging over. Now that should make that horizon look a bit more or a bit, bit, bit lighter but I will go back and do a little bit more but I'm just bringing some of that shadowy colour back into the, the landscape remember it's lost and found if you don't learn anything else today it's this softness of the impression of Scott. Light against dark. Always light against dark. Let's put some little bits of nothingness here. Then we're going to the wild flowers. Let that dry off a bit.
let's put in more colour. There are no greens in this part. I tried to do that without greens, but I just want to get the the light grasses up like this sort of stuff. Right now. Look, we don't really like that shape. Just gently touching the touching the paper. Trying to show the, the heat of the day. Mm. All right, now we're putting a little bit of white with that shadowy colour, and we'll just drag that over. That'll just give a bit of, bit of light in the shadow. I hope you will. Softening it. Oh. Right, let's go and have a go with some uh, some wild flowers. So let's get a bit of blue, a bit of white for the corn flowers. So I think this brush is good for it, isn't it? Bit of random. This. We'll leave the uh, poppies till last. Put some white flowers in there. Oh, it's a foul day, I mean. It's uh, very, very breezy. meadow. There's not much coming off the brush. I'm having to sort of coax it. Right, let's put in some poppies. Poppy red, bit of yellow in that, just to brighten my cat yellow. Let's try to get them random. I'm not a botanist. but I'm not using much of a colour. I'm just using this white with the yellow ochre just to show these grasses in that coming up against the shadow. Now this isn't a bad brush. It's just not a good brush. It's just, just doing different things. Right, we're just softening all around here, just a little bit of highlight.
between that brush. I think we need just a little bit more dark on that horizon. Now, use that same brush. Try to uh, avoid unpleasant shapes. Okay, well I don't reckon that's bad. Let's just see if we can get just a little bit of more character in that sky with a bit of, bit of that. Not quite sure about about this. Let's just get that in there. This, as you can hear, it's quite rough. And watercolor is a wonderful medium for or oh, substitute for canvas, hardboard, MDF. Well, I'll just put that bit of Cajello out. Well worth trying. If you've not used paper, <coughs> but the thing about paper is that, being watercolour paper, it is uh, linen rag and And it's durable. Constable and turn the painted oils on their watercolour paper and they're as fresh today as they were when they painted them. I'm trying to get a, a sunny a sunny look without overdoing the white. Okay, I think you get the idea. Uh, <coughs> right, I'll just put that yellow out so I have a nice so I'm going to um, just get a slightly greeny colour. So I'll mix a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, keep away from the from the black for this. So that it all might show against the, the red. No, no branches, but a little bit of red just to. Compliment. Okay. <coughs> Do we want a figure in there? Oh, why not? Find a figure brush. Mm -hmm. So, white shirt day. Oh, let's just put it to one side. We 
Make sure you clean your brushes. Dress on. Big there. Got a head the size of a football. Let's just get rid of that. I'll have to paint around it. I've got my knees covered up with an apron because I've ruined so many pairs of jeans. to the white. Uh, gives a bit of scale to it doesn't it? I'll, I'll leave those in. I won't take them out. Right, thanks for watching boy, boys and girls. See you soon. Uh, oh God. I'll put it in the mount. Well, I can only show you a bit of the mount because we're quite away, quite too close for a zoom. Let's just. Okay, let's just click that. Doesn't know where my clips are. Oh.